What's the worst movie you've seen from start to finish? I know it just came out, but honestly cats. It's just bad. I went with friends to laugh at how bad it was, and it was a fun time for 30 minutes. After that it was just hard to sit through. I felt that way during the 2 minute trailer. Not even Idris Elba can save that piece of crap. Fantastic Four, 2015. Legitimately went that's it? At the end, 95% of the movie is boring uninterested dialogue, 5% boss fight. Rumor has it the director lost his crap halfway through, fired everyone and rewrote the third act slash ending. This is why the movie feels like two different movies, and goes from an okay superhero movie to a pile of steaming hot garbage midway through. His behavior on this movie actually cost him a Star Wars movie as well. I was under the impression it was him who got sidelined by the studio, and they brought in ghost writers slash directors to clean up him losing his crap. It's too bad too, he did such a good job with Chronicle. Hellraiser 4, then 5, then 6, 7, 8, then after 9, I had a renewed appreciation for 4, 7. I refuse to watch the new one. The worst part is, I've seen them all more than once. Do you hate yourself? Pain and pleasure, indivisible. Battlefield Earth. I was taking a mini bus from Christchurch to Dunedin and there was a TV at the front and a selection of DVDs including Battlefield Earth. The driver asked the passengers which one we should watch, and I said not Battlefield Earth, it's supposed to be terrible. He thought it would be so bad it's good so put it on. God it was dire. When it was my stop and he went to get my luggage he actually apologized and said he should have listened. Wait, the driver was watching the movie, listening, but that was enough. That animated movie, Alpha and Omega. Such a mess. I'm not allowed to choose the movie anymore with my family. Did you know there are 7 sequels? I know it's a meme at this point, but Dragon Ball Evolution is genuinely freaking awful. Even if you aren't a fan of the anime slash manga, which, full disclosure, I grew up with and loved, it's just hot garbage. I only sat through the entirety of it, because my friend asked me to watch it with him. I don't think I'll ever fully understand Hollywood and their reasoning for drastically changing a piece of media from its source material at the end of the day it only had surface level similarities. It's like, why even call it by its original title then? To pull in the original fans? They're gonna hate it the moment the trailer drops. I just don't get it. Lol. Fun fact, I worked on that movie, VFX. It's the only credit I've ever removed from my IMDB. Did you know ahead of time, and not tell anybody it was going to be as bad as it is, or just bite the bullet and go along? This past weekend, my son had his birthday, and he wanted to go to a scary movie with his friends. The only movie that looked remotely scary was Gretel and Hansel. It was not scary. It was bad. It was opening night, and a grand total of about 12 people were in the theater. It was so boring, at least a quarter left, before it was half over. There's a plot twist near the end. For most movies, you think wow, I didn't see that coming. Or I totally saw that coming. In this movie, you just think well, that happened. It landed like a dead salmon tossed on wet concrete. It was awful. Damn that sucks, I was looking forward to it cause the director, son of the main actor in Psycho, made a pretty creepy movie called The Black Oat's Daughter. The Last Airbender. I was a big fan of the show, so when the movie came out I convinced my friends to go and see it. They were skeptical at first, but I was sure they would like it. It was the Avatar after all. And then it started, and it was absolute crap. I never cringed so hard in my entire life. Every time I thought it can't get any worse the movie proved me otherwise. Worst of all it wasn't even funny bad, it was incredibly boring and cringy, and it just kept on going. I still feel bad that I made them watch it. I felt a similar way when I first saw the movie. Chiamalan just butched as the whole series and all the characters' names. Like YTF do they pronounce Arnang? Skyline 90% of the movie is just them cowering in a high-rise apartment. The end credits are far better than the movie. An hour and a half of people hiding in an apartment. Two minutes of Pacific Rim. The latest Sherlock Holmes film with Will Ferrell. 
The movie started with about 20 people, but I was the only one who stuck around long enough to see the end credits. When I saw this in theaters as well, when it was over some guy behind me said to his buddies well that's 2 hours of my life I'll never get back. Newsflash. Every hour you live is an hour you'll never get back. James Acaster. Aragon. That movie was so bad that it made me wish I had never enjoyed the books so that I wouldn't have thought seeing the movie was a good idea. I actually really liked the movie. Then I read the book and now the movie makes me angry. The Swimmer, 1968. It's a full-length movie, based on a short story. It's about a dude who walks through the woods into his friend's backyards, talks to them for a bit, then swims across their pool, and goes to the next house. My dad keeps it recorded on RTV as a way to get guests to leave our house. I feel like you did a too good job of describing it. Now I want to see it. I feel like I've already seen it just from Op's description. Emoji movie, and before you ask my brother's wife downloaded it for a weekend trip without service. I watch every movie with Patrick Stewart in it. This is the only time I've regretted that. His character was crap. Manus Hands of Fate. I was told the MST3K version was going to be funny. Movie caused me physical pain. The MST3K version makes it humanly watchable. Even then it's a hard task to get through it. If I recall, that's the one where they apologize for making him watch it. Avatar The Last Airbender. Seriously frick that M. Night Shyamalan guy he's to the whole Avatar series. What the end he is to got season 8. Oh god. I'd almost forgotten about that disaster of a movie. Hopefully the Netflix live action remake is gonna be redeemable. I don't know, man. The live action Netflix adaptation of FMA. B was hot garbage. The Circle. The one with Tom Hanks and Emma Watson. I was so disappointed in that movie. The cast showed being great, and the book was great, but that movie was just WTF. It's like whoever adapted it for the screen was missing every other page of the book. Tall girl. Everyone hates me cause I'm tall. And a girl. And a hot blonde at that. Star Wars Holiday Special. God was that awful 90% of the movie is in wiki, without subtitles. Nobody likes that movie. Nobody. Even the cast hates it. George Lucas hated it. Everyone hates it, and pretends it doesn't exist. Neither Mark Hamill nor Harrison Ford could finish watching the movie. Kerry Fisher requested a copy of the movie in exchange for doing commentary narration for the original trilogy, so she could have something for parties when she wanted everyone to leave. It's the absolute worst use of an artistic license in the history of mankind. Jar Jar Binks is a Shakespearean icon next to anyone in that movie. George Lucas' actual quote, which was said at a Star Wars convention, about the Christmas special, if I had the time and a sledgehammer, I would track down every copy of that show and smash it. The most recent Mummy movie. I was high as frig with my brother and his roommate when we watched it, and it was the biggest heap of garbage. Some people left in the middle of it, we were laughing at super unrealistic scenes, it's a joke of movie, it's very very awful. The problem with that movie is that it was supposed to be the first movie of a cinematic universe featuring classic monsters. Which is awesome, but they focused so much on the cinematic universe that they completely neglected to tell a good story and instead focused on overblown visuals and goofy action to subsidize on the bad plot. Universal freaked themselves over. They wanted a cinematic universe so badly that they rushed it too far and shot themselves in the foot. That's what happens when you want to compete with MCU, but fail to see what makes the MCU so great. Hell, the reason why the MCU worked is that they didn't actively focus so much on trying to shoehorn the idea aside from mid credit scenes and some small tidbits of info. Hell, it took me years to realize that the Incredible Hulk actually confirmed the idea of Captain America four years before the first Cap movie came out. And then you have the mummy which practically screams into your face that Dr. Jekyll is here. Everybody wants the Avengers, but nobody wants to make Iron Man first. Ballistic, X vs. Sever. The best thing I can say about this movie is that I completely forgot it even existed until this very moment. I read the title and thought holy crap I forgot about that movie. And then realized I know I saw it, but can't remember a single thing about it. So I guess that's a plus. 
I watched all the Sharknado movies. I hate myself. To be fair, I'm pretty sure they're designed to be bad. Yep. They saw how good the reaction was to the poor CGI and unrealisticness of the first one, so they just kept upping it, until it was just a crap storm of bad CGI and impossible scenes. Netflix adaptation of Death Note. No joke I could literally go 3H straight talking, how absolutely trash that awful crap evil crap to remade, only to torture everyone who is unfortunate enough to lay there soon, to be burned from the sheer cringe and discomfort eyes of a movie it was. I didn't think I could feel such disgust before I saw that god awful film never meant to be seen by man, and I still wake up at night screaming in horror because of that embarrassment to the whole human race. After I saw that I drank 10 liters of bleach in the hopes of dying, but the ghost of that horrific crap crap kept haunting me, and I don't think I'll ever get over that absolute monstrosity, didn't like it. I told my manager at work, who loves Netflix and is trying to get into anime to watch Death Note. I shared with him how I felt watching the anime for the first time. It was one of the first anime I ever watched, so I was really excited for him to watch it. I told him specifically, watch the anime, not the show. He ended up watching the show because it's shorter and now he thinks I'm an idiot. Birdemic. The acting. The CGI. There are no words. Lol was this movie purposely made bad? I can't imagine their reason for actually showing the characters commute to different locations. It was a personal project written and directed by someone with no experience in the film industry on a shoestring budget. The birds were literally animated GIF files from the internet. In car footage is cheap. Jupiter Ascending. It was so bad, I wanted to walk out so many times, but the ticket was like $12, so thought frick it maybe it'll get better. It didn't. I feel like that movie was not meant to be taken seriously. Seriously, Channing Tatum is a furry who rollerblades in the sky. Seriously, if you go into it with the mindset that it's a cheesy, ridiculous CGI mess, it's fun after watch. My friend and I quoted to each other daily. In the name of the king. I figure it stars Jason Statham I'm a sucker for his movies, plus a bunch of other big names Burt Reynolds, Ray Liotta, Ron Perlman. ETC how bad can it be? I figured it would be a cookie cutter medieval movie with some badass Statham head kicks. OMG. It's so bad. Like so bad. No you all movie should ever be watched. Be careful, he might challenge you to a boxing match for criticism. It's called The Horse Dancer. It's about a gymnast who, for some reason, goes to a horse camp. It's basically an advertisement for a real riding camp and features some of the worst dialogue and acting I have ever seen in my life. One scene that stands out is the head counselor absolutely losing her crap because someone did something that put the camp at risk. Total overacting. 10 tenths entertainment. Tina Belcher has entered the chat. 10, 0 BC only watch it if you have a fetish for girls with filthy dreadlocks and you slept in all history lessons. Finally, a movie for me. I might get eaten alive for this, but I can't stand any of the Fast and Furious movies. Anything after Tokyo Drift felt like milking and milking. Also less cars more Hollywood to your action. I'm also of the opinion that anything after Tokyo Drift is horse crap. I'm still trying to figure out how Ludacris went from freaking West Coast custom style garage owner to international hacker. Transformers The Last Night. The only reason I didn't walk out was because my brother was there. I later found out that he wanted to leave too, but the only reason he didn't was because I was there. It was horrific. The tragedy of the Transformers movies for me was that I wanted to love them. I can't stand any of them. The first one was pretty good. I mean, in comparison. Left Behind 2014 with Nick Cage. I watched the whole thing hoping it would get better. It did not. They completely ripped apart the source material, book, not Kirk Cameron movie, and made a movie out of, I Ike, about the first 20, 30% of the book. It can't even be described as awful, that would be too generous to the film. I enjoyed the full series of books, but man, it just does not seem like a series that could ever be made adequately due to the probable pushback. Looks like the director has the right to try a full adaptation of the series, but I see no chance of it ever happening with that first offering. 
After Earth starring Will and Jaden Smith. It was two hours of watching Jaden not listen to his father in a life or death situation and whining and crying when not following said instructions almost killed him. I think I was mostly disappointed because of the hype I'd seen about the movie. Promise and behind the scenes interviews prior to the movie's release discussed some deep lore that got me really excited, but I never saw it reflect in the story's plot or any footage. Apparently, everyone was about the same skin color, because a few hundred years into the future, everyone is supposed to be the same skin tone, because of globalization and ease of access to interracial relationships, and a linguist was supposedly hired for this movie to create an accent that carefully combined a majority of the accents of the world if they were all merged into one nation. It must not have been a particularly good linguist because Will and Jadon ended up sounding like two people who were bad at impersonating Victorian English. Then they would hop in and out of using it, so at times they just basically spoke a present day American accent. Almost like the director just went, you know what? The accent is dumb. And we have two more hours on set today, and three more scenes to shoot, just talk like normal people. It was just such a bummer, because I really liked Karate Kid, Jaden did a fantastic job despite being so young, and I really liked Will Smith. The movie just wasn't very good. I will never forget the most scathing review I read of that movie, where someone pointed out that Will and Jaden are father and son, and yet they have absolutely zero on screen chemistry. The third Jeepers Creepers. Say what you want about the first and second, I see those as classic with a hint of dark comedy. But the third. Trash. Isn't the creator a total creep too? Unfriended. Dark web. My cousin who studies computer science said that it will explain the horrors of dark web. It was full of crap and bullcrap. Good god this movie was so bad. The one kid who gets swatted when they play the sound of a shotgun cocking over his speakers and they just absolutely unload on him. Awful awful movie. The first one was at least a decent slasher and the whole movie taking place on a computer screen was kinda different and interesting. I actually really really liked the first one because it was such a unique concept for a film and yet it never really got boring based on how limited the visuals actually were. The Room. I know it's unofficially the worst movie ever. We watched it for the sake of it being a bad movie, and it didn't disappoint. Anyone with me on this one? It is terrible, but it's best experienced as part of an interactive screening. Nothing quite like yelling spoon and lobbing plastic spoons at the screen when a piece of background art happens to feature a spoon. Yeah it's great watching it in a theater full of people screaming at the screen. I probably wouldn't be able to sit through it at home alone. Hall Berry's Catwoman. It will never cease to amaze me how Hall Berry can be so good yet put out this movie. Legitimately the only saving grace for this movie was her in a cat suit. I believe Roger Rabbit once said there are three good things about the movie. Her face. Her body. The cat suit. Suicide Squad. I saw it at a drive-in theater and I would have driven away if that was an option. I got free tickets for this and still felt like a rip-off. The unnecessary music track on every transition trying to be got g but without the plot tie and the stupid dancing. The dark tone for no reason obscuring what could have been good action, but who knows I couldn't see. Son of the Mask, without doubt. Even any asylum film is better, in the sense that those are at least entertainingly bad. Has anybody seen the movie Ant Boy, or was that just a fever dream I had? Oh. I remember seeing that on Netflix. My little brother wanted to watch Ant-Man, because I told him it was good, and she turned Ant-Boy on instead thinking they were the same. Was it dubbed from another language or something? Meet the Spartans. During my summer internship that year we had an international student who loved 300, and was convinced that Meet the Spartans was part of that film franchise. I remember how hyped he was to see this on opening night, and how dejected he was on Monday when asked him how it was. We tried explaining it to him for a bit, but he didn't seem to understand what he was in for, so we all figured screw it, it'll be fun to hear his reaction. Probably rubber it's about a tire with superpowers blowing crap up and killing people. Also had sex with a person. I loved that movie. I saw this movie last weekend and absolutely loved it too. It's obviously very polarizing, 
but it was hilarious in a very dark way, and if you can get past its self-congratulatory tone, it has a lot to say about showbiz and human consumption. Got to be Highlander 2. A sequel that isn't just unnecessary, but completely craps all over the emotional beats of the original, and ruins everything by giving a half-baked explanation to things nobody needed answers to. My wife and I turned it off after watching, and declared that it didn't happen and doesn't exist. It's that bad. You should see Highlander 5 The Source. It's so bad, that the climactic end fight has to be seen to be believed. Grown men came up with this spoiler alert. Duncan MacLeod simply runs around the Guardian of the Quickening Source so fast that the Guardian screws himself into the ground spinning to follow him. Either Highlander 2, The Quickening, or Catwoman. To be fair, I don't watch Adam Sandler films, so I've not seen Jack and Jill, nor have I watched Battlefield Earth beyond the first 15 minutes. Jiggly. It was absolutely awful. Terrible writing, wooden acting, showcasing J-Lo and Affleck's romance, the soundtrack was designed by taping tracks to a dartboard. The only bright spot in the entire movie is when Christopher Walken randomly wanders on set and spouts nonsense, then leaves as suddenly as he arrived. However, one minute of levity doesn't make up for the other two hours. Independence Day, Resurgence. Watched it once sober and once high BC my friend didn't believe me when I told them how bad it was. The characters were either two dimensional or straight up annoying. Looking at you desperate guy friend who obsessed over women on a space station instead of your job. The plot was stupid. I understood why Will Smith didn't want to come back. Hemsworth isn't the greatest actor, but this movie made him seem like the worst. The logic of the plot was so bad it was clear the writers probably wrote this while high on coke. One night, the only character I sympathized with was the sassy robot orb that showed up to warn everyone, was shocked to get shot down, then heavily implied humans are dumb, before asking the humans to head up their super secret base they used to hide from the alien queens even though the alien queens fear them for some reason that was never explained. All around a bad movie I can rant about for ages. P.S. The guy driving the bus with kids and then adopting those kids he found on the side of the road. Bullcrap bullcrap bullcrap. The alien queen dying and the guy letting the bus full of kids get out and potentially touch this dead extraterrestrial body was where my suspension of disbelief snapped. I know the first movie had a lot of CGI but the human emotion in ID4 was great. Not to mention the subtle humor was well done. Resurgence is just a typical yowthinized, what I call it when studios cast younger actors to take over a franchise so they can make two, three more films with said young actors. C. Pacific Rim 2, movie with a weak slash dumb plot with stupid logic and a half-assed love story thrown in there. Basically a studio cash grab off the ID for name. Ultraviolet. I love Mila Jovovic, but gods that movie gave me a headache. I could barely jerk off to her while the movie was playing. The Last Airbender. M. Night Sham's lowest point simo. Skyline. It's like they ran out of money at the climax of the film and finished it with still frames during the credits. Absolutely without a doubt the lady in the water insanely boring, but also super up its own ass. Guest starring M. Night playing a famous writer that produces something incredibly profound that the world isn't ready for, and he gets killed for it. Is that the one where the kid looks at cereal boxes to predict the future? I'm sorry the kid does what? Human Centipede 3. I had no idea they made a third. I actually sort of enjoyed the first one, but I gave up on the second one. The part where he tries to get that girl in the car, and she gives birth, while he's attacking her, then she mashes on the baby stuck under her gas pedal was just a little too much for me. That and the whole black and white, mentally handicapped vibe was just too weird. Third one is so disgusting I turned it off after 20 minutes. Like the jokes weren't funny, it wasn't shocking. It was just three ugly old white guys talking about raping girls, and raping men and torturing people. Adam Sandler's Jack and Jill. I've watched a ton of terrible movies and this is by far the least enjoyable. Not a single funny moment in a comedy, a horrible premise, horrible acting, painful dialogue and Al Pacino making a total ass out of himself. It's beyond horrible. A Wrinkle in Time. Ruiz becomes a giant flying lettuce leaf. 
Growing up, this was one of my favorite books. I must have read it at least a dozen times. The movie was so bad I barely made it through. I think it killed part of my childhood. Was helping grandma a few hours a week for a couple years. Any freaking hallmark movie. Where a big city professional goes back to their hometown to reopen mum's bed and breakfast. Or write a story about some dumb crap. Spoiler, their ex is single after all these years. Movie called Teeth. Friend recommended it, will never watch a movie he recommends again.